Jan Nick Sinner, the men's world number one tennis player, has avoided a doping ban after he successfully argued that two failed anti-doping tests in March had been a result of contamination through his physiotherapist. Following an independent tribunal last week, a panel ruled that Sinner bore no fault or negligence for twice testing positive for trace amounts of the banned substance Clostabol. Clostabol is an anabolic androgenic steroid AAS derived from testosterone and the concentrations of 121 picograms per milliliter pg ml and 122 pg ml in Sinner's two positive tests amount to less than a billionth of a gram. With over-the-counter drugs in Italy containing Clostabol, numerous Italian athletes have tested positive for the substance in recent years. I will now put this challenging and deeply unfortunate period behind me. Sinner wrote in a statement. I will continue to do everything I can to ensure I continue to comply with the ITIA's anti-doping program and I have a team around me that are meticulous in their own compliance. After Sinner's positive test, the International Tennis Integrity Agency ITA, which handles anti-doping and corruption in tennis, consulted with scientific experts and then took the case to the independent tribunal, which was held last week on August 15. Sinner's arguments hinged on his fitness trainer Umberto Ferrara's purchase of trofodermin, an over-the-counter spray used to heal cuts. While Sinner and his team were staying at a villa in Indian Wells ahead of the Masters 1000 event, Giacomo Naldi, Sinner's physiotherapist, accidentally cut his finger on March 3 with a scalpel. After the bandage was removed, Naldi used Ferrara's trofodermin each morning on the cut between the 5th and the 13th of March. During that period, Naldi continued to treat Sinner with full body massages and he bandaged Sinner's feet. Sinner suffers from a skin condition called psoriasiform dermatitis on his feet and back, which causes itchy skin and the 23 year old scratching can lead to small cuts and sores. Sinner and his team argued that he had been contaminated through the treatment he received from Naldi, who did not use gloves. Three scientific experts confirmed that this was a plausible explanation for the presence of clostobol metabolites. Crucially, Sinner maintains that he did not know about either Ferrara's possession of trofodermin or the fact that Naldi was using it. The ITA accepted Sinner's arguments on the balance of probability and the subsequent independent tribunal concluded that the player had no reason to suspect the presence of trofodermin around him or any anti-doping risk from his treatment with Naldi. Karen Morehouse, the ITIA's chief executive, said, following that investigation, the ITA accepted the player's explanation as to the source of the clostobol and that the presence of the substance was not intentional. This was also accepted by the tribunal. We thank the independent tribunal for the speed and clarity of its decision in relation to the player's degree of fault. The ATP wrote in a statement, we are encouraged that no fault or negligence has been found on Jan Nick Sinner's part. We would also like to acknowledge the robustness of the investigation process and independent evaluation of the facts under the Tennis Anti-Doping Program TADP, which has allowed him to continue competing. This has been a challenging matter for Jan Nick and his team, and underscores the need for players and their entourages to take utmost care in the use of products or treatments. Integrity is paramount in our sport. Neither of Sinner's positive anti-doping tests had previously been made public. The first positive test took place in competition on March 10 during Indian Wells and trace amounts of a metabolite of Clostobol were also found in an out-of-competition test on March 18. Just before the Miami Open, which Sinner won. His semi-final result at Indian Wells has been disqualified along with 400 points and the $325,000 £250,000 prize money earned. While athletes receive automatic mandatory provisional suspensions after being notified of an anti-doping rule violation, it can be appealed and removed if an athlete demonstrates at a hearing that the violation likely involved a contaminated product or a substance of abuse. Sinner was provisionally suspended from April 4 until April 5, shortly after winning the Miami Open, and then just before the Madrid Open between April 17 until April 20. Both times. The provisional suspension was cut short after Sinner successfully appealed them. In a busy period of the ATP calendar during the clay court season, both short-lived provisional suspensions occurred during off-weeks. 
Some of Sinner's fellow players have been critical of the findings, can't imagine what every other player that got banned for contaminated substances is feeling right now, wrote Denis Shapovalov. Sinner has continued to compete on the ATP Tour as normal in what has been a breakout season, with the Italian winning his first Grand Slam title at the Australian Open and rising to number one shortly after. On Monday Sinner won his second Masters 1000 title at the Cincinnati Open and he boasts a tour-leading 48-5 record this year.